Finish. As in finish what you started. It's the 1970s, 1980s. Her name is Joanna. Joanna is a California girl. She is one of three, and she has great parents, and they're living in California. And then they decided, well, it was time to move. So they moved from there to Greece. Man, she is on her heels. They go to Greece. They decide, man, they've got to get back. They go to Greece, they move back to Philadelphia. From Philadelphia, they move back to New York. As a result, it's part because of the work that her parents do. See, Joanna's parents, well, they're actors. And Joanna's parents do actually pretty well. Her, her mom uh, actually was part of the Beverly Hillbillies. No, she's not granny. Just, just move on. As a result of it, man, she was involved in a little bit of that. She did a little bit of the, like, uh, the wild, wild west. And then her dad was part of Days of Our Lives. And so as a result of such, man, that's their world. So when she got back, you could tell that, man, school just didn't have the interest that she thought it would. So she went to what they call the New York, or maybe it might be the LaGuardia School of Dance and Art. She go there and she starts performing. But you got to remember now, she is starving to death. There is just no money in it. I mean, she becomes a telemarketer. Uh, she becomes a bike messenger, Joanna does. She was uh, even running errands for people. Uh, she did things for like Nutrisystems. I mean, whatever it took to make it another 30 days. And as a result of it, man, it, she is begging and pleading for just any ink opening. And she gets one. And she gets an opening in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Swing and a miss. Okay, I got that. As a result of it, she does that, and then, man, it, it makes a little money, right? So we can move, and then she gets into a movie called Leprechaun. Don't even bother, okay? As a result of it, man, now the wheels have officially come off. We're back to doing telemarketing. We're out to running errands. We're just, we're just not getting there. And as a result, she is about to throw in the towel, and her parents tell her, oh, no, you don't. You started this race, you're going to finish it. So either you run it all the way out till you just can't do it and it is officially over, or you stay in this game until you either prove it one way or another. But no more halfways. As a result, she's sitting in a car. She's across the street at a grocery store. She's about to throw in the towel. She, said she just wants one more shot. She looks across the street, and lo and behold, is an, uh, like an uh, executive from NBC pulls up to get gas. She says, man, I don't know if I should run over there. Just plead with him. I don't know if I should just wait. I, I, I don't know what. You know what? I'm going to do what my parents told me. Run it all the way out. She runs across, probably catches the guy a little off guard. I mean, you could imagine. Man, and she is pleading with him and just pours her out to him. Just pours her heart out saying, man, this, this is where I came from. This is what's going on. This is where I'm at. And this thing, then it got to stop. People are taking notice of you. You just need to finish what you started. Man, those words begin to echo. And he said, just hang in there. As a result, man, he goes off. And the next thing you know, not long later, she gets a call. She gets in a movie called, um, uh, not God Almighty, Bruce Almighty. So, so when it doesn't matter. You don't know what I'm talking about anyway. Just work with me. As a result, pick a movie. Doesn't matter. Okay, I don't know if she's in it or not. Okay. As a result of it. She gets in the movie, and then she gets another one called Picture Perfect. And then that one leads to another one uh, called Good Girl. And then another one is uh, Molly and Me. And then as a result, man, brother and sister in Christ, man, she just starts to take off. Let me tell you how popular this woman has become. Because of this sitcom in this series, her hairstyle to this day is popular. They call it the Rachel. Lord, yes, Lord. It's the last clue I got. You know her from the sitcom Friends. And you know her as Jennifer Aniston. Ma'am, my brother and sister in Christ, I got to tell you, I have watched enough of that show. My mother loves that show. You can only watch it so many times before you just want to take a hostage. But at the end of the day, you finish what you started, and that's why she is where she is. That is that gospel. My brother is Christ, the good Lord remained in the desert. He remained 40 straight days. Now stop. 
you're a first century Jew. These are the things that you know. First of all, the guy that is speaking, it's the Gospel of Mark. Mark is a follower of Peter. He writes this in about the year 60. As a result, Mark is very Gentile-driven. He's not Jewish-driven, so he's speaking to people like you and I. He's all about the facts. And he says, and he tells you and I, that the good Lord was forced or led into the desert by the Holy Spirit. There's not a dove puddling. He's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're three in one. It's internally he knows what needs to be done. And now he's walking in the desert for the 40 days. Now, my brother, sister in Christ, remember this is because he knows what is to come. Now, stop. When he gets into the desert, do you notice certain things happen? That these wild beasts are out there. There's angels being administering to him. But as a first century Jew, this is what you and I know. We fast forward, backwards, excuse me, backwards, all the way to the Garden of Eden, where the animals roamed, because there was no need for, for animosity, there was no need for anger, or et cetera, because sin has not entered the equation. Adam is naming all the animals. They're in a lush garden. Everybody's singing, come by ya, everybody's getting along. Then all of a sudden, you and I are, imagine, saw the Garden of Eden, and now we see him in a desert. There's no plush gardens, there's no water, there's no food, and now the beasts are wild. All of a sudden, we, we go back and we look at Adam and Eve in the garden, and there's angels administering to him. According to the Talmud, which is their, uh, if you will, their book of traditions, angels administered to Adam and Eve because there was no reason to, quote, cook, end quote, because you're in the Garden of Eden, everything's supplied. Now, all of a sudden, you and I are looking out into a desert. There is no food. There is no water. As a result, there's wild beasts, and now you might have just a few angels. That's what happened when sin comes into the world. That's how far we have dropped. That's why he's describing it to you that way, because he wants you to know that's what sin brought into the world. Everything has come this way because of sin. Now, my brother and sister in Christ, you and I need to understand, too, that the same way the devil went after Adam and Eve is the exact same way he's going to go after Christ. Adam and Eve, they saw a tree in the middle of the garden of good and evil. As a result of it, they saw it with their eyes. They wanted it, lust of the eyes. They knew it would taste good, lust of the flesh. And then it would make them wise like God. And then all of a sudden, what happens when they get out in the desert? The devil tells the good Lord, throw yourself down. And if you want it, you covet it. Lust of the eyes, the angels will keep you from even dashing your foot. If you turn them breads to stone, oh, excuse me, those stones to bread, Lust of the flesh, it'll taste good. I will give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. Power. The same way he went after Adam and Eve is the same way he's going to go after Christ. Is the exact same way he's going to go after you and I. He doesn't have to change his spots, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You and I commit the same sins over and over and over yet again. And did you realize, my brothers and sisters in Christ, he has just been baptized by John the Baptist. He just had the heavens open up, a dove descend, and the good Lord say, this is my son, who I am well pleased. Now he's going in the desert for 40 straight days. And the devil is already on him. Go to confession and walk out the confessional and see if the devil doesn't try to bite you as soon as you get out. Somebody crosses your path, the phone, the text message you got before you walked in, and then all of a sudden, man, you're committing the same sin you could have just confessed 20 seconds ago. That's how hard the devil is in the world. And if you re read the rest of the gospel, he said he left him alone for a while. In other words, I'll be back. My brother and sister in Christ, go back in Scripture. All of our best players, all of our best players, finish what they started. My brother in Christ, Mary Magdalene, what if, what if she woke up Easter morning and said, what's the point? I have... Turned upside down. I had all seven demons. Pride, anger, gluttony, lust, avarice, sloth, and envy. Now he's dead. What's the point? What if she just said, I'm going to hit the snooze. I'm in for the day. Nobody's getting up. Why should I get up? I mean, even the vicar of Christ isn't getting up. She gets up. She finishes what she started. I left behind all seven demons. Only saint ever to do so in Scripture. I'm going to get up and go sit next to his tomb because I'd rather be near a dead Savior than live people. I don't care what the guards say or do to me. 
I don't care if there's a boulder in the way. I can't move that's been sealed by Pilate himself. I'm going to finish what I started, that I'm a believer in him. And because she does that, she's the first to see the risen Christ before the vicar himself. My brother and sister in Christ, what if Peter had decided a long time ago, Lord, please, when we, I tell you what, when would you and I have cut our losses with Peter? You're in the boat the very first time. Lord, to come steps in our boat after you and I have been fishing all night long. He tells you and I, we got to go back out again. And then we say, Lord, man, you're a carpenter. Oh, you want the nets out? I got your net for you, buddy. Here, whoa, man, we're going to catch boatloads. Exactly right. Would you and I would have dropped in the bottom of that boat and said, depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man? Would we have said, you know what, I'm going to finish what I started. I am going to follow him. What about if we had been in the boat when the storm came and Peter yells out, Lord, do you care if we perish? Would we have walked away then and never came back? What about if he made us walk on the water? What if you went out in the boat with Peter and we said, oh, no, stop, Peter. He's calling me because 2,000 years later, I'm the Thomas. Stay put for a second. Would you and I have gotten out on that water? Would we have finished what we started? When we denied him three times, if it had been you and I and Louis Peter, would we have still followed him? Would we even have had the remote courage to be crucified, much less upside down, and for three hours preach the gospel? Say what you want about Peter. Peter is a finisher. Make no mistake about it. That man's got the gift of perseverance. You could beat him and do what you want, but he is finishing what he started. And who, if it ain't Peter, what about Paul? You know how diabolical his life is? He goes from Saul, the great Pharisee, talking about Gamal himself, money, fame, fortune, power, prestige. He's killing Christians because he chooses to. You go from Saul to Paul, you lose everything. Would that have been enough for you and I to call it good? No fame, no fortune, no money, no prestige, no power. What about after we were blinded for three days? Would we have cut our losses? What about, do you know that Peter, that, excuse me, that Paul, in his very first homily that he gave, was beaten and stoned afterwards so much so they actually thought he was dead? Would you and I got back up and go into the next city and continue to preach? Would we finish what we started? You know, brother, sister Christ, he received 40 lashes one time, actually 39, right? The guy that's whipping you has to count aloud. So if he hits 40 or 41, then he gets the 40. So he stops at 39. Would you and I would have continued to preach after 39 lashes? Times five. That's how many times he had to go to the well. Because every time he went and preached and they caught him, they whipped him again, another 39 lashes, five sets. How many times would you have traveled with Paul when Paul said, man, will you come with me? I, his name is synonymous with being the great Paul. Would you and I have gotten in the boat with him? And then it sunk. And then we have to swim to shore. Four times. Would you have finished what you started then? Well, now here you and I sit 2,000 years later. Will you and I finish what we started? From a practical standpoint, the promises that you made to your family. Will you finish what you said you're going to do? Go to school. Finish the class. Get that project done. Get it built. Get it out the way. Whatever it takes. Return that phone call. Go by and see somebody in the nursing home. Go by the hospital. Go by and fix something that you promised. Or are you going to live up to your word and finish what you started? Anybody can start a race. The question for you and I is, can you finish what you started? What about your prayers? How many times do people come to me? Father, I was praying my rosary. Unbelievable. Fell asleep, not even through the first decade. But don't worry, Father. Like I was worried. <laughs> don't worry, Father. My angel finished it. Well, let me help you with that theory. Your angel's in heaven. He ain't got to finish it. You need to finish your rosary. You started it. You finish it. Have you been writing in your journal? Or have you already stopped? Have you started a book and decided you can't even finish it? You get up in the morning, did you say your prayers? Or you say, no, I'll catch it tonight. And then we don't catch it tonight, then I catch it tomorrow, and then we never catch up. Do you, are you going to finish what you started? I mean, you were on the phone with God. Can you finish the conversation? My brother and sister in Christ, at the end of the day, you and I have to run Lent all the way out. 
40 days. Christ didn't come in and get a Coors Light on Sunday. It didn't stop raining on Noah on Sunday. And I don't want to hear the argument, well, you know, Father, the 40 days actually ends, uh, you know, on, uh, on Holy Thursday. You're going to celebrate on Holy Thursday? And he gets butchered on Good Friday? You can't run and finish out three more days because you're, you're counting days? My brother and sister in Christ, you're good Catholics, good Catholic men and women. Finish what you started. Because why? At the end of the day, you and I are going to hear either one or two things out of Christ's mouth on our judgment. And don't look around because there's not going to be anybody there with you. Naked and alone, you stand before it. And all of a sudden, judgment will happen. Remember, the day you and I die, that very second, no more forgiveness. That's over. That was between the day you came in and the day you went home. You could have asked for all the forgiveness you wanted right over here. Today is judgment day based on how you played between these two days. You will either hear, depart from me. I don't know you. Yeah, you called my name. You even spelled it right. You even said that I was saved. But I watched you break my commandments time and time and time again. I heard you deface my church. I heard you curse and gossip and slander people as if you could judge and stand in my shoes. Depart from me. I want nothing of you. You didn't finish what you started. Or will you and I hear the immortal words? Welcome home, my child. Have I waited for you? My God, my God, I love you so much. I watched you when people persecuted you. You finished the race. When they yelled at you, you ignored them and finished the race. When they told you you couldn't get it done and you did it anyway, you finished what we started. You would pray to me incessantly even though you were tired and hurt. Sometimes you were mad, but you finished what you started. You began and you ended. Welcome to the table of all of my children, and to the table of my saints. Welcome home, my child. Job well done. You are a finisher. My friends in Christ, even the snails made it to the ark. Finish what you started. Amen? Amen. Now I've been yelling for 20 minutes. Amen. Amen. There you go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand.